This is the 10th lecture of my series on advanced mathematical physics. We have been discussing differential geometry of manifolds and in particular over the last few lectures we have been talking about vectors. Today we are going to talk about an operation that can be done on tangent vectors. This operation is often called push forward but its more formal name is a Jacobian. In order to talk about that, we must remind ourselves of an operation that we talked about earlier, something called the pullback. The pullback essentially depends on a map, a smooth map, shy, between two differentiable manifolds, M and N. We are going to assume that all our manifolds are C infinity manifolds from now on, unless otherwise mentioned. Now, if f is a function belonging to C infinity n, that is, if f is an infinitely differentiable smooth function on the manifold n, the pullback induced by psi on f, denoted by psi star f with star up here, that is going to be important later on, is a smooth map defined on the manifold m. Shai star f is simply defined to be the composition of the map f with shai. Note that if you take a point p on the manifold m, shai acting on p will actually move that to the manifold n and then f acting on that will give you a real number. So f composed shai acting on p will give you a real number. So it's a map, first of all, from m to r. That is also infinitely differentiable follows from the standard properties of real analysis where compositions of smooth maps can be shown to be smooth. Now two important properties of this pullback function are going to be of importance to us. The first one is that the pullback function psi star is a linear function. That is pullback of course is the function between C infinity n and C infinity m and if you take a linear combination of members of the set that is take a linear combination like C1 F1 plus C2 F2 C1 and C2 being real numbers and F1 and F2 being smooth functions on n then it can be easily shown from this definition that this is actually equal to C1 times the pullback of F1, psi star F1, plus C2 times psi star F2, the pullback of F2. Another very, very important property, which again follows rather trivially from the definition, is that the pullback of the product of two functions, F times G, is actually the product of the individual pullbacks. That is, you can pull back F to form a function on M, to psi star F, and pull back G to form a function on M again, and their product is going to be the pullback of the product function FG. Now with this background, let me start talking about the so-called push forward, which is in a way an opposite to pullback, but frankly we don't really call it push forward. We go by its more formal name, a Jacobian or the differential. The definition of the push forward goes as follows. Once again, M and N are two differentiable manifolds and psi is a map from M to N. It's a smooth map. That is, it's a C infinity differentiable map. Now, just like the map psi induces a pullback function psi star, which pulls functions belonging to C infinity M and maps them to functions belonging to C infinity M, Shai also induces a map between the tangent planes TPM and T Shai PN. Note that the point P maps to the point Shai P under the map Shai and the tangent plane at P maps to the tangent plane at Shai P of N. Now this map is denoted by psi star with a 
two major differences from the pullback notation. One is instead of being upstairs as a superfix, this star is deliberately placed downstairs. So things which push forward as opposed to pullback will all have a star placed down. We are beginning to see a sequence of pushbacks and pull forwards, beginning with the pullback of functions, and now we are talking about the push forward of vectors. But what is important is the point P is important in this discussion. So it's not really shy star that we are talking about. We are talking about shy star P. That's the notation. Now this notation is often also replaced by this one. You often write this as D shy P, where D shy P is the Jacobian or differential of shy. Now how is this defined? Since it's a map from Tpm to T shy Pn, its job is to take a vector Vp belonging to Tpm and then by action of shy star P on Vp produce a member of T shy Pn. Sorry, this has to be changed. This is T shy Pn. Now, how do you define this vector T shy star P Vp? And the answer is simple. You use the pullback of functions to do this. Note that the tangent vector, any tangent vector, is defined basically as a linear functional which acts on functions to produce real numbers and has some additional properties like linearity and the differential property. So, first of all, to tell me what shy star PVP is, you have to tell me what it does to an arbitrary function belonging to C infinity L. That is, a smooth function on the manifold L. And it's pretty easy to see that the only way we can do it using this vector Vp is to essentially give Vp a function on M to act upon so that it can produce a real number. And the obvious function that you can give on M has to be the pullback. Note that F is a function on N, pulling it back using shy star, this shy upper star, produces a function on M, and Vp gets to act on that function and produces a real number. So first of all, this shy star P Vp satisfies the very first property that we need for this to be a tangent vector at the point shy p. That is, it maps a function on n onto a real number. But that, of course, is not enough to qualify shy star p vp as a tangent vector. What we need is that this map should be linear and it should also have the derivative property. So now let us check that these two properties are really holding here. That is, this thing that Shaisa PVP that we have defined here is actually a member of the error is still persisting here T Shai P N. In order to see that, what we need to do is to apply Shaisa PVP on a linear combination of functions on N. This is to check the linearity of this map. So shy star PVP acting on C1, F1 plus C2, F2 is by this definition simply VP acting on the pullback of the function C1, F1 plus C2, F2. Note that just a while ago I have talked about the two basic properties of the pullback function. One of them is that the pullback is linear. So C1, F1 plus C2, F2 acted upon by shy star gives you C1, shy star F1 plus C2 shy star F2. So this is the function which is fed to Vp. Now Vp being a tangent vector is a linear map. So the result here is obviously C1 times Vp acting on shy star phi1 plus C2 times Vp acting on shy star phi2. F2. The 2 here is in the wrong place. Now, of course, 
Each of these individual terms are actually push forwards of the vector Vp acting on F1 and F2 respectively. The first term here is nothing but Shy star P Vp acting on F1. That's simply this. And the second term here is nothing but Shy star P Vp acting on F2. And since this works for all F1 and F2 and all real numbers C1 and C2, what we have established is that Shy star P Vp is actually a linear map between C infinity n and R. So the first check for the tangent vector has been passed. This is a linear map. There is still another property which has to be obeyed by Shy star P Vp, which is a differential property. And let me remind you, it is the differential property of how this thing acts on a product of two functions which actually pinpoints it as a vector belonging to a particular tangent plane. To see whether Shy star P V P really belongs to T Shy P N, let's apply that on a product F G where F and G are smooth functions on N. Again, according to the definition, this is nothing but V P acting on the pullback of F G. But again, a property of the pullback that we had just mentioned a while ago tells us that this is Vp acting on the product Shy star F times Shy star G. Now, Vp is a genuine tangent vector. We have started it out with it. And like all tangent vectors, it acts on a product in a very defined fashion. It acts on the first factor in the product and gets multiplied by the value of the other function at the point P and then it does the same thing with the other function. So Vp acting on the product of Shy star F and Shy star G does the following. Vp acts on Shy star F and that's multiplied by the value of the other function Shy star G at the point P and similarly Vp gets to act on Shy star G, the second function in the product and this result is multiplied by the value of the first function Shy star F at P. Now, here the first factor is of course Shy star P acting on Vp, this vector acting on F. And Shy star G acting on P is nothing but G of Shy P. Remember, Shy star G is the composition G composite Shy. So, this first term becomes Shy star P Vp acting on F, that's this term, times G acting on Shy P, whereas the second term here becomes F acting on Shy P times this factor is Shy star P Vp acting on the function G. And note that that is exactly what you mean by the differential property. And the fact that the value of the function g and the function f here are evaluated at the point shy p tells you that this object is actually a vector at the point shy p, a tangent vector to the manifold n. Now that we have established that shy star p v p really is a member of t shy p n, that is, we have actually shown that the map Shy star P is a map from TPN to T Shy PN. Let us now take a look at a very important property that this map has. The property is simply the following Shy star P, seen as a map from TPM to T Shy PN, is a linear map. That is, if you take a linear combination of two vectors from TPM, let's say V1P and V2P, combined through real numbers C1 and C2, Shy star P acting on that linear combination will give me a vector which must be a linear combination of Shy star P acting individually on V1P and V2P. To see this, let us apply this vector Shy star P acting on C1, V1, P plus C2, V2P on a function f which of course belongs to C infinity n. Now, according to the definition of Shy star P, 
this must be the vector c1 v1 p plus c2 v2 p acting on the pulled back function chi star f. Because tangent vectors form a linear structure, c1 v1 p plus c2 v2 p acting on chi star f is simply c1 times v1 p acting on chi star f plus c2 times v2 p acting on chi star f. We are just using the linearity of the tangent vectors here. But that means that this expression can be rewritten as c1 times chi star p v1 p acting on f Of course, there's no f1 here, it's just f and c2 times chi star p v2 p acting on f. Now, since this is true for all functions f, it simply means that chi star p acting on c1 v1 p plus c2 v2 p gives us a tangent vector at chi p to the manifold n. But this tangent vector is not any tangent vector, it is the linear combination of the two tangent vectors we would get by applying chi star p on v1p and v2p separately. So the linearity of chi star p has been established here. Let us now turn to the formal name of this push forward function. The Jacobian. Now the name should be familiar to most of you. From real analysis, multivariable real analysis. For a function from Rn to Rn, which maps the numbers x1, x2, xm to f1, f2, fn, where each of these functions f1, f2, fn are really functions of m real variables, the Jacobian is defined to be a matrix with elements given by the partial derivatives of the functions f with respect to the coordinates x. That is, del fi del xj is the ideal element of your Jacobian. Now, how does this actually tally with this definition of the push forward that we have given on manifolds? Now, in order to see that, what we need to do is use charts. So, let u phi be a chart on M with the point P of the manifold being included in the domain U of the map phi. And the coordinate functions used in the u phi chart be x1, x2 up to xm. I'm assuming that capital M is a small m dimensional manifold. On the other hand, capital N, we will assume that to be a small n dimensional manifold. And let v chi be a chart on capital N. And in this case, we want a chart whose domain contains the point chi p, the point which p maps onto. Now, the coordinate functions on n provided by the chart v, chi will be denoted by y1, y2 up to yn. Now, if we take the coordinate basis vectors delta del x1, delta del x2, etc. at p, there are m of them, and apply the push forward operation chi star p on each one of them, we are bound to get elements of t chi p n. Now, what are those vectors? We can easily find them by using the standard rule that any vector, in this case a vector chi star p del del xi p, can be figured out by using the basis vectors, the coordinate basis vector del del y j at chi p. And the formula is simply this. You apply the vector on the coordinate functions, in this case on the functions y j, and they give you the coefficients of the expansion. Remember, this is nothing but the standard rule that we had figured out that vp is the same as vp xi del del xi p. This, of course, was for an element of tpm. Here we are actually using the same thing for an element of t chi p n. And instead of the xi's being the coordinate functions, yj's are the coordinate functions here. Now, the coefficients here will simply be chi star p del del xi p, these vectors acting on the coordinate functions y j. But let me remind you that that, by definition, is simply del del xi p 
acting on the pullback of yj that is acting on psi star yj yj composite psi and therefore this set of coefficients can simply also be written using our standard shorthand which looks like the partial derivative of yj composite psi with respect to the coordinates xi. Of course, yj composite psi is a function which takes points on the manifold m first to the manifold n and then to real values. So this is a map from m to r and when you are saying you are doing the ith partial derivative of a map from m to r, what you really should do is use a proxy function and then carry out the ith partial derivative with respect to the coordinate. But that is exactly what we are doing here. But notice that this looks exactly like del fj del xi, the coefficients that we have in the Jacobian. In fact, the matrix with entries del yj composite psi del xi at p represents the linear transformation psi star p with respect to the basis given by this and this respectively. Remember to find out the matrix elements of any linear transformation, what you are supposed to do is take the basis vectors of the domain vector space, apply the linear transformation on them and expand out the results in terms of the basis for the range vector space. Now this statement that you take these partial derivative like things these are really partial derivatives of the proxy functions to form the matrix elements of this transformation psi star p should make the connection with the Jacobian matrix in multivariable calculus, what we talked about a while ago, rather obvious. In fact, this is the reason why this particular operation, psi star p, is a linear map which is also called the Jacobian. In fact, the Jacobian is a more common name or a more formal name for this than the push forward. The next thing that we will look for is a formula for the Jacobian of a composite of functions. Remember here we are talking of maps which take you from one manifold to another, but we could have a succession of such maps and we are asking about what is the push forward induced by such a composition of a succession of maps. In order to see this, let's talk about a situation where psi1 is a map from m1 to m2 and psi2 is another map from m2 to m3. m1, m2 and m3 are smooth manifolds and each of these two maps, psi1 and psi2 are smooth maps. Then of course, the map psi2 composite psi1 will actually take you first using psi1 from m1 to m2 and then using psi2 from m2 to m3. So it will be a map from m1 to m3. And by the fact that the composition of smooth maps gives you a smooth map, this is going to be a smooth map too. So let us look at what exactly will the push forward be if you were to use psi2 composite psi1 to push a vector from tpm1 onto t of psi2 composite psi1 acting on p m3. In order to see this, what we will do is start with an arbitrary vector vp belonging to tpm1 and some smooth function f on m3, that is f belongs to c infinity m3. Now, psi2 composite psi1 star p acting on vp is of course going to be a vector which acts on a tangent plane of M3. In fact, tangent plane at the point psi2 composite psi1 acting on P of M3. So in order to see what this vector is, we will apply that on the smooth function F from C infinity M3. And using the definition of this push forward, this is simply going to be the vector VP, the original vector on TPM1, 
acting on this pulled back function, pull back using Shai to compose Shai 1 of F. Now we need to use another property of this pull back operation that we had not talked about earlier today, although we did derive this in some detail when we were talking about pullbacks, which is the following. If you pull back using Shai 2 composite Shai 1, note that you are actually pulling back a map on M3, a function from M3 to R into a function from M1 to R. And in order to do that, what you actually have to do is first pull back from M3 to M2 this function using Shai 2 star first, the Shai 2 pullback first, and then apply the Shai 1 pullback. So this is actually Shai 1 star composite Shai 2 star. When you compose two maps and then look at the pullback using that, you do compose the individual pullbacks but in the opposite order. And that's exactly what we are doing here. This is VP acting on the function which you get by pulling back using Shai 2 composite Shai 1 star, this function f. But that's actually Shai 1 star composite Shai 2 star acting on f. In other words, it's the same as VP acting on Shai 1 acting on Shai 2 acting on f. So this is Shai 1 star acting on Shai 2 star f. That's what the pullback really is. And now, Notice this is vector VP acting on Shai 1 star pulling back some function. This function is Shai 2 star f. But for the time being, let's focus on Shai 1 star. So this is really going to be the push forward of VP using Shai 1. Shai 1 star at P acting on VP. This new vector, which of course is a vector, tangent vector to M2 at the point Shai 1 acting on P, this vector acting on the pulled back function Shai 2 star F. We are now going to use the definition of the push forward again. This is Shai 2 star pulling back F and this vector is acting on that. So this is nothing but T Shai 2 star P, but not P. T Shai 2 star acting on Shai 1 P. Remember that's the point where this really is a vector. And then that acting on Shai 1 star PVP, this vector, and this full thing acting on F. Now, since this is true for any arbitrary function F in C infinity M3, we can just drop the F and write this as an equation involving the push forwards. Shai 2 composite Shai 1 star P is actually a composition of Shai 1 acting at P, that is Shai 1 star P, followed by Shai 2 star acting at the point Shai 1 P. So this is the composition rule. Unlike the pullback, the push forward essentially composes keeping the order intact. But you have to of course remember that the map here is Shai 1 star at P. And when you are talking about Shai 2 star, it actually acts at the point Shai 1 P. That is, it acts on the T Shai 1 P M2 tangent plane of M2. So that is how a composition of maps translates when you are using a push forward using that. Now, as we have seen, the push forward or more formally the Jacobian essentially helps you to use a smooth map between two manifolds to push a vector from one tangent plane of one manifold to a tangent plane of another manifold. Now these tangent vectors are actually linear functionals which obey the derivative property. But at a more geometrical level, they have a very nice interpretation as tangents to curves. Now a map between manifolds can also push a curve on one manifold to a curve on another. So it is natural to ask the question, is the push forward of a tangent vector to a curve related to the tangent vector to the pushed forward curve? 
and we will soon see that the answer actually is yes. Now to see this, let us again begin with a differential map psi between two differential manifolds M and N and let us consider a curve on M. Remember a curve on M is actually a map from an interval I of the real line to M. It's a map which really is the curve. What we usually think of as the curve, as something drawn on the manifold, is really the image of the curve and not really the curve itself. Now, because the curve is a map from I to M, the composition of that curve, this map, with chi, actually defines a map from I to N, and that is really a curve on N. This is my pushed forward curve. A curve which has been pushed from M, using the map chi onto N. Now, the tangent vector to this push forward curve chi composite C, at the point chi composite C at T0, which of course is nothing but the point chi of C T0, satisfies the following. If we take a function, which is a smooth function on N, and apply this tangent vector chi composite C prime at T0, to a function f, what we get, this is the standard definition of a tangent vector to a curve, is nothing but ddt, the derivative of the function f pulled back using the curve psi composite c star f. Of course, in general, the tangent vector to a curve c is given by c star f, f's derivative. Here, because the tangent curve itself is chi composite C, it is chi composite C which is pulling back the function f. And that, of course, is nothing but f composite chi composite C acting on T0. But now, notice that this is nothing but T pulling back the function f composite chi. And therefore, this is nothing but the tangent vector to the curve C the original curve at the point T0, C prime T0, acting on the function F composite psi. And therefore, that's C prime T0 of the pulled back function using psi of F. But now, using the definition of the push forward, this is nothing but psi star. There is a push forward at the point C T0 of C prime T0 acting on the function F. And since this is true for all functions f, we can simply see that if you take the tangent vector to the curve c at the point t0 and push it forward using psi star at the point c t0, what you get is a tangent vector at t0 of the push forward curve psi composite c. So the Jacobian of psi actually pushes tangent vectors of c to tangent vectors of images of C under psi. So there's a nice geometrical meaning to this push forward operation. Now, we will have plenty of occasions to push forward or pull back other kinds of objects in later lectures. But you should realize one thing. The fact that functions are defined on points on manifolds to produce real numbers is intimately connected to the fact that using a map from M to N, you can actually pull back functions on N to give you functions on N. On the other hand, tangent vectors act on the functions to produce real numbers, and that is why you can actually push forward tangent vectors from the tangent plane of manifold M to a tangent plane of manifold N, Basically, what we do is we use the pulled back function, act upon that by the original vector VP, and use that to define the push forward thing. So later on, when we see that we can have objects which act on vectors to give numbers, such objects would actually be pulled back rather than pushed forward. And this chain goes on. As I have said, you will have plenty of occasion to see such objects in the future. For the time being, let us call it a day for today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will talk about 
putting all the tangent planes of a manifold together into our first example of what is called a bundle. We will meet the tangent bundle in the next lecture. Bye till then.